Well, welcome to another episode of the podcast. I'm your host, Moira Gorski. So glad that you are back here today. And another one of my favorite days where I uh, bring you one of uh, my friends um, as a guest, someone that I've met in my life and um, really made a very profound impact on me when I first met her. I don't know if she knows that, but um, just I've watched her uh, since then um, and just am so impressed. And also, when I, as I've said on my podcast so many times, every, everybody has a story. And when I started to hear her story, I knew why I um, was connected with her uh, because her story uh, we're going to hear more about today. Um, and as I just interviewed somebody just a couple hours ago, her struggle, she's taken that and now she's just helping other women, empowering other women in a way that I've never seen before. It's just so cool and motivating. So Kimberly Rea, she joins me today. She's a speaker, a marketer, a girl boss. She is just incredibly awesome. So Kimberly, I'm just thrilled and very honored that you joined me today. I'm very excited to be here. Yes. Yay. Excellent. So, um, so let's, uh, if you remember the day that I met you, um, it was kind of a silly way that we did run into each other at the door, but I just started to hear your story and you started to share snippets of um, an eating disorder and, um, and recovering from that. And so I just want to start as I do with all my podcasts, just, just kind of start to share your story of, of your eating disorder, kind of of your life and those struggles that you had there and how it's, what you learned from that, kind of how it's getting you to where you're at today. Okay, so um, I've been in fitness and dance my whole life. So weight was always something that was important. Um, back in the day when um, we were like in cheerleading and things, you had to make a weight. So I think that's kind of where it stemmed from, that weight was a big issue with me and my, my family's um, on the bigger side. If any of them are listening, they're going to kill me. But um, so weight, weight has always been a struggle. And it wasn't until I got divorced that um, it kind of it kind of came into, into my life. So I was trying to maintain weight after my second kid, and it, I wasn't cutting it. So there was a day that um, I just like, I just gorged on food. I just ate myself silly to where my stomach hurt so bad. And I said, I, I, what am I going to do right now? How am I going to get rid of this? I couldn't even watch my kids throw up or right? it was like throwing up was just such a disgusting thing to me I'd like leave him in the bathroom and just say mommy I'll get you when you're done mm -hmm. and so I ran into the bathroom and I spent the next like two hours trying to throw up everything that I ate and when I did I thought wow this this could be a thing right I could eat anything I want and I can just uh, go throw it up so it ended up that it just took over my it consumed my life it consumed my life every part of it um, but that's kind of how it started mm -hmm. yeah and um how did you, I mean, did you come to, um, again, so many people that I talked to, it's kind of their secret for many, many years until there was some type of breaking point where you realize, they realized that it needed to be over. Um, did you have something like that? Well, you know, I tried several times, especially because, you know, you're, you're trying to date people and, and, and have a relationship with people and you can't hide the fact that you eat nothing all day and then you eat, you know, three hours worth of food at night. That was a challenge. So I, I did try, but it was, it's such an addictive it's it's I didn't know how to get out of it and if I did sit down and eat something and you know 20 minutes later I was like I can't eat this you know I have to go and get rid of it because I'm, I'm going to maintain this uh, unfathomable weight that I was I was a size zero it was disgusting how skinny I was but I, I didn't know how to break the cycle when I when I opened up um the dance and fitness studio in 2014 that was mostly the pivotal moment where I said like I can't lead people I, I can't have, I have no energy I, some days I can't speak a sentence because I was starving myself all the time I said this is not going to be a good thing if you open up a, a dance and fitness studio so that's when I said enough's enough and threw out all the all the clothes got rid of all the clothes and said you know you're gonna have to gain weight for a minute to to find yourself and to find your balance mm -hmm. and so you just did that on your own I did and it, it's it's like I don't even know I, I I've never been a smoker but I, you know, I've heard of people kicking it, you know, cold turkey. It was the same thing. And it was like, there were days that I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, you're, you're so big right now at a size eight, you know, because I had been so frail for almost 15 years, I had an eating disorder. So that was it. I just said enough is enough. And I had to deal with, you know, getting a little bit bigger and, and figuring it out. But, you know, knock on wood, six years later, I feel, I feel great. Mm -hmm. Well, and since you're a dancer and an awesome dancer, and I don't know if you've seen on my social media, but I've started a ballroom dance. 
Yeah, I um, take lessons. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm having a blast and I'm finding that it's really, um, you know, I've had an eating disorder in college. I've gone through a lot of healing on my own and um, it was a very long time ago. And I, you know, I feel good about me. Yeah. And when you're standing in front of the mirror and, you know, you got to look up, you know, I just, I'm like watching my feet and he's like, no, no, look up, look up. Yeah. And there in front of you is me. It's been a little bit of a humbling or I don't, you know, it kind of has taken me back to now I'm going to get a little emotional, but you know, it's like, I feel like there's a little something in there that is coming up to say, uh, come on, let's, let's heal this part. You know, because people tell me I look great and I mean, I look great, but then you're like, it's, it's like kind of like, wow. Yeah. And, and in order for me to go forward and get better, if you will, in this, I've got to look at myself. And, yeah. you know, he said, look, you have to look and look, watch your feet and all that. And it, for me, for some, it may seem simple, but I think, I mean, and I also watched a movie last night with a bunch of gals called Embrace, which was all about body image. It's a really great one, really great documentary. And so many, I mean, so many women, everybody, I would say, every woman struggles with their body image. And they think that they're disgusting and awful. And I don't have those thoughts, but just the, like when I put my arm out to do the whatever Foxtrot or something, and I got a little jiggle, I'm like, oh, but, but it's, um, but again, that's me and it's beauty. And this is like, again, that, that documentary is a really good one. It's just like, this is just my vehicle that takes my soul around, you know, it's just, yeah. I have jiggled too. I, I, yeah. I stand right in front of that mirror when I teach. I'm like, you know, three feet in front of the mirror with everybody behind me. And I, I have the same thing where I'm like, there's just days where you're just like, I'm staring at myself and I'm like, I got to look around the room because I'll start like nitpicking. Right, right, right. But um, um, so what was the uh, motivation for the Fly Girl Fitness and the dance studio? And well, I don't know if it's motivation because I, I, I happen to be having dinner next door at the place when um, the owner of this restaurant knew that I had a pretty big Zumba class on Sundays at a fitness center. And she's like, you know, these guys next door are left in the middle of the night. Why don't you have a little studio next door? And of course, because I've had, you know, a couple of glasses of wine in me, I'm like, let me go take a look at the number outside. So I called the number thinking the guy would schedule with me in a week or so, but no, he came right down. So the motivation was I woke up with some keys in my hands and had to figure out how to do this. And I said, I'm not gonna fail as a bad dancer. I'm gonna fail as a bad marketer if I don't pull this one off. So, you know, I, I, luckily I had experience in running some um, aerobic programs when I was going to school. And, you know, I have a fitness background for 30 years. And I thought from the marketing aspect, you know, we could build this with, with big mouths and social media. So I'll give it a try, it was a small studio. And so we opened in uh, 2014 in August. And then a year and a half later, we outgrew the space and now we're in 2,500 square feet. Um, about a mile away from our, our little studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, and it's great. I mean, I just again, so, get so motivated by the fact that you just have this attitude, like you just do it. Right. Uh, telling you through this COVID thing, it was like, there were some days I was stabbing my eye with a spork. Yeah. It's yeah. been tough, but yeah, knock on wood, we're still going. Mm -hmm. Well, and, um, I mean, can we talk a little bit about to just, um, uh, I mean, again, you do marketing for a living, but I know that, again, you, you started your dance studio. You're all about empowering women. You're all about being a girl boss and helping us, you know, just stand on our own power. And um, just talk a little, can you talk a little bit about, again, that, like your passion for empowering women? Yeah, so, so um, it's kind of a funny story, the whole girl gang kind of thing, because as a, as a kid, I was bullied kindergarten through sixth grade kind of bad and not knowing why. And so that's always been kind of a foundation of me hanging out with everybody, wanting to get along with everybody, wanting to include everybody. And it's, it, it happened at the studio almost two and a half years ago that we had one of our members, um, kind of like the ringleader of fun, you know, you know, we have adult children, all of us. So she'd, you know, plan an outing or plan a dinner. We, we, we got close as some, a circle of friends at the studio, but the circle started to get smaller and smaller. And eventually I, I go away for a, a speaking event in San Diego and I get, I get kind of a nasty email written by another member 
And basically it was, it was you know, you're, you're not empowering, you're a horrible person, you treat that other member, the one I'm, I'm speaking about, um, poorly and bad, and I'm never coming back to this. Anyway, the devastating, devastating email made me cry. I'm like, this is the biggest speaking event of my life that I'm at. Why, why would this girl send this, this other person about this other girl? So fast forward, this other girl that I said was our little ringleader, Susie Snowflake, we'll call her. <laughs> she, she ends up stalking me. So she leaves the studio, starts sending me, you know, made up Gmail emails with all kinds of information and, and just harassing and bullying and harassing and bullying. And so I kind of pulled back on social media about a year ago because I said, you know, everything I do, every victory I have, I get some kind of cockamamie bad thing or a bad Yelp review or a bad Google review from a fake account. So I said, maybe I'll pull back a little bit. And it was June, about a year and a half ago, June, that I woke up 4 a.m. Those are my great ideas come at 4 a.m. And I said, I'm going to start a girl gang. And if this person wants to watch me, she's going to watch it on crack. I'm going to just all empowerment, pull in all these women, you know, just, just make it a, a space that's, um, that's comfortable and it, it feels safe and nobody's fancy. Yeah. Let your hair down. Even the events that we did, you know, that, that's kind of my thing is like, you know, I'm sick of going to these networking events where everyone is fancy and you're sipping your wine and you really don't want to talk to anybody. No, I want to like get down and dirty and find out what your issues are. So we could stick together. So kind of girl support girl. So it didn't come from like, I'm just going to save the world. It was more like kind of, um, you know, like I, I don't, I'm not going to be bullied. And if I am, it's going to be super public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where it all started from. So I just love, I love girls supporting girls. I like, you know, having real relationships with the people. I'm kind of like a guy like that. If I, if I can't call you or text you, but I see you or, or we're able to get together, it's, it's fun and it's cool and it's real and it's not fancy. I don't know. I've been to too many networking events where somebody gets on one of those podiums and you're like you know who they really are and they're going you know i'm just living the dream no you're not i know who you are but you know i i, I feel like i've been to too many of them so i'd like the events to be or when you're talking to another person that you're just like be for real with me everybody everybody sucks at some point and it's okay you know mm -hmm. right. And, right yeah and so how have you had to change that around like with covid are you doing like with the girl gang are you doing online events are you doing some things in person or like how have you needed to shift with that? You know what, I haven't really done anything during COVID. I mean, it was kind of a, it's, it's, it's a life changing as I told you before we get on this, it's life changing what's happened this year for me. But um, I took a step back and I kind of realized, especially meeting um, my significant other, how fast I was going, how fast I was running. And it wasn't like I had much to show for myself, but it was like, I had to be busy. Even on my down days, like find a networking event and, you know, having met somebody that's a lot slower at pace and, and stops and smells the roses has really taught me that I was running. I was having panic attacks at night. I was just trying to fill this space with so much, like marketing here and the studio and girl gang events. And it, even watching some of the stuff I still see online with people trying to maintain that speed, I'm exhausted. I'm like, what was I thinking? Mm -hmm. So I haven't done anything, but I have a lot of people reaching out to say, you needed to do something. I'm just kind of waiting to see when we can get back into in person without being uncomfortable or having people not feel like they're safe wherever we do this. Right, right. Well, yeah, and I, I think I shared with you before we started too, I mean, I've done an interview with some others that that's, it's like this badge of honor, right? We get so busy and, um, and we just have to stay busy all the time. Yeah. And it's, um, and I know I've learned myself, it's like, I'm just somebody that always wants to move forward. Yeah. And I've learned from a gal that I've, sat in her circle of, um, that she has a soul circle of women that we meet once a week. She said, you know, there's some days for, sometimes it's forwarding and sometimes it's like gro grounding down. And yeah. when we can ground down and be quiet, like sometimes that's where the answers come from, yeah. or that's where the blessings come from, or that's where the grace comes in and those type of things. So, well, you know, it's funny on that note on that story. I, I first started coming up, he lives up in Twin Lakes um wisconsin right above the border but you know i, I came up here the first couple of times and a couple of his friends just walked over you know they had their their beers in their hand they're going to come and sit outside with us and i have this like black lacy like top on you know and i have my the glitter over here and my my fancy pants cars parked in front of us right behind his pickup truck my fancy <laughs> pants car. and they came over and it made me realize like like what are you doing we sat out there and you know nobody's on their phone you know, and you know who I am. I'm constantly 24 seven on social media. No one's on their phone. We had the best time. I'm laughing, but I'm like, Hey babe, could you go get me like a sweatshirt? Cause I felt like, you know, this is, this is my life. You know, I'm like everywhere I go and, you know, dress to the nines and be fancy and make sure you got the right glittery shoes on or whatever it may be. It just made me feel like so 
dumb. I felt so dumb. And now that we've made so many, like, you know, a couple of relationships up here and such, and, and nobody's fancy. I'm, this is the first time I had makeup on in a, a few weeks. I mean, I, I don't even put on the makeup anymore because, you know, one, he, you know, he's like, you're beautiful without it. And it, first time I feel secure like that, but I also feel like, what was I doing? What was I doing? And I even laugh with a couple. I saw them recently. Like, this is what I was doing. I'm so embarrassed the first time I met. Like, oh, I don't even worry about it. But just kind of the reality of the whole situation, you know, mm -hmm. slowing down. Yeah. Well, I think it's a great thing that we could all learn from you um, and others to just, yeah, slow down and kind of appreciate, like, what's the priority really in life? Is it the uh, makeup? Is it the shiny shoes? Although I got to tell you, your fashion is pretty, uh, pretty top notch. So <laughs> I'd like to come shop in your closet, you know, well, for, a, for a night out. But um, I mean, do you feel like growing up, you, I mean, got this type of go get them from your parents? Or do you feel like you, um, or perhaps, I mean, I, sometimes people end up, because you're such an achiever, what I see, and so confident that sometimes people kind of go to that as, because they're kind of insecure or they were grew up not to believe so much of themselves. And I know that yeah. sometimes the eating disorders can develop because they're not feeling enough and adequate. Yeah, and I have to say, I mean, both my parents were, were great, but I think because I had been through so much hardship at, you know, when I was young, my, my, um, my parents divorced, then my mom got diagnosed with cancer when I was pregnant with my first, didn't make it to the, to the wedding, and then I was a single mom, you know, almost right away, and so it's kind of fight or flight, where you're like, I, I got to figure this stuff out, nobody handed me anything, um, and then I, I will say the bullying side of, of, of my life really kind of shaped me too, to, to want to include all kinds of people and not be judged by the way I look or when somebody meets me, you know, you get that standoffish thing, but then I'm like, you know, snorting and laughing and they're like, I like you. So just to kind of like put your guard down and not be judged. I know that's so, so cliche, but not mm -hmm. be judged by, you know, what you look like, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, yeah, again, it's great that you've been able to take that hardship and move it into something so positive and that you're helping other, you know, helping other people. Um, I mean, do you, do you have like, you know, I didn't prep you for this, but like, you know, three tips that you're always saying, hey, these are the most important things or like three, like something that like kind of a, your standards that you live by or things that you really feel like are so important for us women to really keep in mind so that, um, again, we can live our best lives or standing in our power. Let me think, what would I say? It's funny because I just, going through this COVID thing, I mean, we almost lost the studio. I mean, it was the rents from behind, the landlord wasn't working with me. And through it all, I said, you know, because people around me didn't help the situation because they're like, all right, we're going to make it or we're going to make it. It's like, I don't have that in me. Like, I don't think like, oh no, I don't know why, but I just, I just see the positive outcome. Like we got this, you know, just do it. Like, it just like put the blinders on. That's kind of, I don't know if that's motivational or helpful, but it's just, I like, just see the, the best outcome instead of, you know, there's too many years that I, I probably lost years off of my life worrying. And now I'm just like, if, you know, go for it. And the other part of the, is, as I get older anyway, is, you know, whatever's going to be is going to be, and don't fight the system. Don't, don't, you know what I mean? Saying and that's a tough one as I, as I get more mature, I feel like that's what I said. Like if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. I do believe in that hundred percent, even, you know, putting out, you know, good words and, and, and good karma and good juju, whatever you want to call it. But um, that's kind of how I feel about it. So the, just keeping your eye on the prize and then letting the universe, get, you know, listen to the universe, slow it down enough to hear what, what you're supposed to be doing. And, and I say the third thing is, and it's been so good to me is pay it forward, help mm -hmm. others, help others, help others, help others. And it comes back tenfold. Yeah. I mean, you've done a lot of that, like feeding the, I even saw that during the pandemic that you were out there helping what businesses or collect food, or I don't know, you were, you were busy there for a while. Oh, I like to do that. Even, even at the studio right now, the people have lost their jobs. They can't afford it. And that's the last thing you need is to stop working out. So privately I send them a message, your account is loaded. I'll see you at the studio. You don't have to reply to me just because it's the right thing to do. My instructors get paid the same amount, whether they have one person or 35. So why not do the right thing? Right. Right. And so how have you, have you changed like with the studio? Are you a lot online? Are you back in person too? Or? Yeah, that's a great question. So when, um, when we closed the studio, 
I had always been wanting to do an on-demand. I thought it was like a great revenue generator and get people from all over the world. So when we closed, we had a private group on Facebook called the Fly Girl Fraternity. And I opened it up. I opened it up to the world and I said, please share this. We're going to start streaming our classes. So I went to my instructors and said, hey, we're going to be closed. I can't afford you, but I'm going to, I'm going to still teach. And every one of my 15 instructors said, we're teaching with you. You don't have to pay us. So we, we streamed every class for, I think, two, two months, maybe three for free. No one got paid. We streamed it for free. And then when we were able to start teaching out in the back of the studio in June, then I started to monetize and I started to upload them. And for $19.99, you can work out any of our classes. And we still every week film a few classes and it goes into our on-demand section. Now we're in the studio as of July, we're in the studio. Uh, phase three, we could have 25% capacity. Now we're at about 10 in the studio. Um, but you know, knock on wood, we're busy. We got new faces, <laughs> our classes are full. So I'm just trying to, trying to keep my eye on the fries. You right, know what right. I'm saying? Right, right. No, but I like, again, I've, I've been really impressed with other people, including yourself, like how you kind of have like, you got to figure it out. Right. And like, again, go online or do remote this or zoom this or whatever. And, um, you know, I think it made us all un a little uncomfortable, but you know, if you have the attitude that you have of pushing forward, and just keep your eye on the prize, like we'll figure it out, right? It's not exactly where we want to be, but right. we can figure it out. But at the same token, I was okay with it not working out, which is a big girl thing. I said, you know, I can't fight the system. If if we do this GoFundMe and we don't raise the money for the rent, because it's it's not coming from memberships, everything stopped for three, four months, right? I, I was okay with it. And I think it's, like I said, slowing down enough and realizing that it, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. You, you're not failing. You can't help that the landlord, you know, um, is being this bad and it's tough. And maybe this is my sign that I'm going to go work at Walmart as a greeter. I don't know, but I was okay with it, which I think is really kind of a cool realization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is that, um, again, the gal that I just interviewed, it's about, we were talking about just that surrendering, you know, yeah. the surrendering to whatever is, is to be. And I know I'm a, you know, recovering control freak and, you know, codependent and all that and still working on that. And it's tough to give up that control, like trying to make sure that it, it works, but doing that surrender of, I don't know, I don't know what's supposed to happen, but we're just going to keep moving forward and whatever's yeah. supposed to be is to be. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, like I said, my summer here, like just slowing down and realizing this, the goofiness of it all, you know, I, here's just a, a small chicken nugget. So, you know, my first couple of dates with this Kurt was, um, he's cooking, he cooks all the time. He cooks all that time. And so he starts making some food and I'm like kind of a low carb eater. I kind of, you know, eat more veggies than meat, whatever it may be. So I come up here and he just slaps the plate down, you know, there's the red meat, the potatoes, like everything Kim doesn't eat. And I started to talk to him about it. And he's looking at me and the way he looked at me was like, what are you talking about? Like it was all my little world that I live in down in the city and the, the way I do things like how jacked up they are and, and how much I'm not appreciating just food and, and trying different things. And it was funny that started the whole slowdown of like, you know, you're, you're portraying something for other people over there and just be yourself and it's okay. You know, just that slowdown. So it's really been kind of a cool, like just some of the crazy stuff I did before. Now I'm like, that doesn't matter, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. And yeah, it's the priorities. And again, sometimes people, sometimes life slaps us in the face, yeah. you know, and sometimes we keep going until we crash, but sometimes something stops us. And for you, it sounds like it's been a really great, a great thing. I will say this because I hear people all the time, like 2020, it's horrible. I'm like, it's the best year I've ever had. One the studio itself, these instructors that worked for free for months, even to this day, they're like, I don't need the check, get back on, on, on pace with your rent. Seeing people come out, step up, all of them, all of them, and I know every one of them needs money. So seeing the faith in, in people and, and, and falling in love, like, oh, there's no way, I'm, I'm such a picky girl, I'll never find anybody, I'm so picky, I'll find something wrong with anyone. And just being, I can't find a dang thing wrong with them. I've tried so hard. <laughs> it's just, I, I have to say, like, I, I've never been in love before. Like, I've never, I've, you thought you were or whatever, but it's like, I, it's just so, it's so easy 
right? It's just so easy. The connection is so awesome. He's like my best friend, but I'm like, I, I look at him, I just like, I want to melt. And, and so that, that falling in love, and then the, then the slow down, I mean, it, it took a pandemic to like stop me. Mm-hmm. And now I'm just like, I want to come up here and I sit outside with my lemonade and I hear crickets and an occasional cow moo. I love it. Yeah. Well, and I can tell you, know, we haven't talked during the pandemic, but I mean, I can tell you're a different person. I can feel that the energy, your vibe is, I mean, your vibe is still great. It always has been, but I can tell that there's, there's a, um, I can tell the slowdown. I can tell the, the balancing and stuff like that. And so I'm happy for you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So I, I love the, I think the year is really great. And it's, you know, knock on wood, we do okay with the studio. I'm like, this is one of the best years. I mean, so much has happened and just reassessing what's important to me and the way my lifestyle was and the, sh- the showy stuff, like who's, who am I with and what am I wearing? And, be. and you know, not that it was ex- anything expensive by any means, but it was like, holy cow, man. I just, I couldn't even watch myself now. You know, people are like, you're going to go to this event. And I'm like, no, I'm not going. <laughs> <clears throat> so just it's enjoying nothing. I mean, we just sat outside. I had the best tan I've had in years coming up here and, and just chilling out and just thinking about like the goofiness that I used to do. And I don't want to go back to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a, a big reader at all? Um, yeah, I read. Or I'm, I'm a big podcaster, especially when I'm driving down to the studio. I'm listening to all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, any favorites that you want to share? Or? I love Oprah's stuff. Um, I love Oprah's stuff. Who else have I listened to? Um, what's her name? Hold on, I gotta look her up. Yeah, I haven't even, I haven't listened to Oprah's. Oh, I love it. She, she has some really, really awesome ones. I do a lot of law of attraction stuff too. Is it, is it Bryn, Bryn Brown? Brene Brown? Brene Brown. Yeah. yeah she just started staff. one, right? I'm looking at my history. Um, yeah. And then I'll do some, like I said, law of attraction stuff or, you know, um, some marketing stuff. But just a, my thing was like before COVID and before I met this guy, I was like, if I'm in the car 20 minutes or more, I'm going to put on a podcast. Like I, I want to, I was going hundred miles an hour, but now I do it so that like, I don't want to just hear music. I want to feel like I'm enlightened or I'm motivated or, 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 or I'm not a weirdo and other people feel the way I feel on different issues or topics and such. So it's kind yeah, of, the po- yeah, the podcasts I think are great. Um, Obviously, I thought this would be a cool thing to do because you share, you know, you share your story or you, like you said, you, I'm like, I walked this morning, I walked the dog and then I dropped him off because I had more of the podcast to listen to, you know, and I feel like, at least for me, some days I want to listen to music, like when I'm driving and um, with my ballroom dancing, I'm listening for different songs because he wants me to give him songs and perhaps choreograph and things like that. But um, a lot of times I want to listen to a podcast too, so I can learn and yeah. learn about something or again like you said feel like you're not that goofy feeling this way if you can yeah. you know find find some common ground within that podcast world or yeah um any favorite books that have made a difference in your life oh yeah i just read uh, i just read um spirit hacking have you heard of that oh no. that's good. i wish i would have them here they're they're back in chicago um spirit hacking oh um what's the What's, what's spirit hacking? What's that? What's... Uh, it just talks about, you know, kind of getting in touch with kind of a spiritual side. It's a shaman that wrote it. Um, let's see the other one I had. I made notes for you. I made notes for you. Da, 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 da. Obviously, the things I've read. Uh, the Subtle Art of Not Giving Up. Yeah. Right. I read that one. I really enjoyed that one. I did read uh, Girl, Stop Apologizing, mm-hmm. um, Five Second Rule, Grit. Um, let's see if there's anything else I wrote here. Yeah, we had... Um, How to uh, Unfuck Yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, who was it, uh, the Five Second Rule? Um, who's that by again? Um, I, I don't know why I don't, can't remember that. Because uh, she was at the... Um, we heard she came to our convention. The Shack Mel convention. Robbins. Mel Robbins. Yeah, yes. she spoke at our our um our convention, and uh, she's just great. I mean, I yeah. love that five second rule of just you know, just if you're afraid, just count down from five and just do it anyway. Amen. So, yeah, 
Yeah. Well, I just, I mean, we could talk for a long, long time, but I just so appreciate you coming on because your energy is, I know, I think your energy is different now. It's still really great, but I'm always so, like I said, motivated by you. And I feel like that's what the world needs is this idea that we just, yeah, stress has come our way, change, change has come, but we got to keep going forward and keep our eye on the prize and, um, and just do it. And figure it out. I mean, you're kind of like me, is it like I kind of do it and figure it out along the way. Yeah. And, um, but then also just the idea that maybe we should slow down a little bit and um, maybe all of this running in life and trying to force things to happen, if you will, maybe that's just really not the way that it's supposed to be. We can find some pleasure and joy and love when we slow down a little bit. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Any uh, last words of uh, wisdom as we kind of wrap mm -hmm. up? No, but I love that you're doing this. And I think, yeah, I think it's, it's super helpful. Like I said before about not feeling like you're alone in the world and talking about it. it took, you know, many years to be able to talk about the eating disorder and, you know, bankruptcies and, you know, late bills and comments shutting off your lights. But now it's like, I love it. You know, I'm motivated by it. So I think it's awesome that you're doing this, this kind of thing. Yeah. Thank you. Cause you know, I thought about that last night as we watched the, uh, that, that documentary is that as much as, you know, sometimes when you say all those things like, you know, the past and the eating disorder and the this and the breakup of the, the, you know, it's like, would we want it to change? Probably no. not. Because no. if we didn't, if that didn't happen, we wouldn't be the people that we are today. So we just want to keep that the same and not necessarily live in the past, but just, again, be here, appreciate that and move, you know, move forward. Um, okay. If anybody wants to find you, um, where would they, where would they find you? Uh, you could go to my website, which is Kimberly Rea, K Y M B E R L E E R A Y A dot com, or Google my name on the internet. Right. Yeah. And um, and you do do marketing as well as you have the 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 studio. And um, again, I'm just so appreciative that you're here and uh, with me and shared. And um, again, just thrilled, grateful that I know you. Um, and. Uh, Thanks for sharing today. And again, thanks audience for always coming back again. I just want to continue to offer hope from, um, again, we all have struggles and uh, we can choose the way that we live our life, how we show up. And um, I choose to, uh, again, be positive, keep our eye on the prize and move forward because we all deserve to live our best life. So thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.